Take my money back, I don't want it anymore. It's not the way. Hi, Kevin Blanche. A lot of you guys keep sending me emails. A lot of the younger guys do a video on tariffs. You people have been watching my videos for two years are going to say, Oh my God, Tanazi, he's only done a hundred on fucking tariffs. But I'm going to talk about tariffs. Yeah, I like to use props in my videos. You guys know that. They'll be waiting for you at Bellevue with their oxygen mask. Yeah, you might think I'm a little crazy. A lot of people think I'm a little freaking crazy. There's a fine line between the truth and crazy. Who's fucking crazy? All you fuckers going to work 60 hours a fucking week, chasing your fucking tail, handing over your fucking 401k with fucking no medical, wrapping yourself up on a flag with your AK-4, saying, I live in the bestest country in the whole world, <laughs> when you've never been fucking two states fucking over. Oh yeah, we took an all-inclusive trip to Cancun, Mexico. You haven't got a fucking clue, rhyme or reason, so be careful when you fucking call me fucking crazy. I like to use metaphors, because you know I'm fighting cancer. But I like to use metaphors in regard to PBS. That's why I use these things. Because when it got all the way down to the budget cut, these radical far-right neocon freaks, and that's who's done this to you. That's who's done it. Let's be clear. Let's be clear. Let's start off with tariffs right now. Tariffs, part of this country's culture all the way from day one. Hamilton, a big, big proponent of tariffs. He talked about cheap Chinese goods coming into the United States then. It's 1776. The Tea Party, I mean, I can get into a whole freaking thing about the Boston Tea Party, about freaking tariffs and avoid ace and anything. Those things existed big time then. Via taxation, via tariffs, via duties, via people moving in on turf wars, the corruption that was going on. Then I can go into a whole spew about that. But look, okay, let's be simple about a tariff. What does a tariff do? And as the far right has done this, through their indoctrination of religion into politics. Oh, you protectionist, you protect. Yes, that's what it does, it protects. What does it protect from? Exploited cheap Chinese goods. It really is finance 101, economics 101. It is a basic, basic idea that works. We had them forever, simply. A guy making 37 cents an hour, American businessman, uproots GM, who guys are making $70 an hour, with men, oh God, they're making $70, oh, oh, oh. Uh, that's a lot of money? No. The reason I wore this Nick shirt is I want to prove something to you. In 1975, the average athlete in this country only made three times the average American. The average CEO, I hear people say 30, no, 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 no. You break down the tax rate. What it was, the average CEO only made four or five times the American. That's fact, and I can break it down. You have to incorporate the tax rate. Take a look what the tax rate was on the 1% in 1975. Take a look. Take a look what it was in 85 during Reagan. Take a look what it was in 65, 50. Hmm, is it a coincidence we have the strongest middle class in the history of the world? Look. You uproot that job, you're GM, you're Caterpillar, you're an American company, we branded that American name, I want to buy American, you just fire them, you close the factories. You open up the exact same plant in China paying 37 cents an hour with no EPA. Pollute all you want, you don't have to big build filters on your admissions, whatever, we don't give a fuck over there. That's what tariffs are, tariffs stop that from happening. Has it happened in the history of from the time of man, you can go all the way back. Look at the Dutch traders. Read into them what, what they dealt with it. They dealt with it. Now look, we need look simple. We had them till '94. Gingrich with his contract on American. You got to realize the progressives had Congress for 46 years. You do understand that. 46 years the progressives. I'm not talking Democrats, Republicans. Progressives had it. There's no coincidence. From 1945 to 1975, we had the strongest middle class in the history of the world. Because the progressives controlled Congress. Okay, 94. The neoconservative nuts get it. First thing they do. Smash tariffs off by signing NAFTA. Putting NAFTA in. Bill Clinton, who ran, called himself the next John Kennedy, who couldn't make a pimple on John Kennedy's fucking ass. John Kennedy, if he could come out of a grave, would crack him right in his hairsprayed, phony, fake fucking mouth. <laughs> Monica Lewinsky. I don't think John Kennedy getting near her. Okay. He signed it. I remember the day he signed it. No progressive, no Democrat. In the history. There's the quantum leap that was made in America. That was the end of the progressive. He lied to us. 
Bill Clinton betrayed the American freaking progressive so hardcore, they're the ones who elected him. He was the next John Kennedy. He signed NAFTA. That was the dagger. That's when this madness started. Of course, and then Reagan appointed Greenspan in 87 as Ayn Rand. Fuck, there goes the progressive Fed. And you guys say, oh, the Fed needs to go. Maybe. But the Fed surely has become corrupt. We had a great Fed. We had a progressive Fed. It was run by a relative of mine for years and years and years and years. Look, they quit being progressive and started being conservative. So the tariff, what do you do? You guys make a 37 cents an hour in this product? Okay, say he's making a car. The car, they make it for $7,000. They want to bring it in here and sell it for $7,000. No, here's a 150% tariff. It's going to cost you six. Get it in line with ours. And we're not talking tariffs that make it impossible. We're making tariffs that make it equal. Look, China uses tariffs on American goods. A lot of people don't know this. China tariffs nearly everything foreign coming into their country. There's a big thing going to China right now on baby formula. They have tariffs on baby formula. They want to knock it down. Cosmetics, 150%. Apparel, cars, you name it. We're talking 100, 200% tariffs China uses on all their goods coming in from the West. Look, no tariffs on Western Europe, no tariffs on Japan, no tariffs on Canada, because they play fair. As long as you have an equilibrium, fair wage. Now, Canada, Japan, and Western Europe might put tariffs on our goods, because look what our freaking pop population is making. Look, so you put a tariff and or duties. Now look, what is the difference? Duty, you throw the duty, they have to pay it up front. That's what I say. I say put duties. Look. It's okay, oh, we, anti-slaves, uh, you know, we hated what happened in the Antebella period and after the Antebella period, well, how we enslaved people in the Jim Crow South, it's horrible, it's horrible. But it's okay if we're going to Walmart and those slave promoters and we buy it over there. It's okay? How is that okay? How is that okay? Slavery here, which we do have slavery here, I mean, it's called the working class slavery. To a 30 cent, what's the difference? What's the fuck? There is no fucking difference. That is the fucking thing. Again, your attention span is small as your fucking dick. So here's what we do. We could turn this entire economy around so fast, real easy. Congress passes an equilibrium tariff and duty law. Any business or company that exploiting labor, and we know who they are, we put the tariff to put that good in equilibrium with a Western Europe good, with a China good, when they're nervous, says, oh, oh, my Walmart bill will go up. Oh, my Walmart bill, I saved $67 a fucking week at fucking Walmart. Yet, in 1975, the average American, okay, the average athlete only made three times. <coughs> Is that because the average American athlete made so much less? Yeah, quite a bit. But the average American made so much more. The average American in 1975 made $15,000 a year. I make my students did this, and don't use the bullshit government data. Break it down. What was oil in 1975? How much did a car cost in 1975? How much did a fucking house cost in 1975? You're going over and over and over and over. Do you know what that would be the equivalent to today in today's wealth if you were making 1975 wages? 116,000. The average American made hundreds. Of, you think we had a strong middle class? You think one person worked 40 hours? My mom in this 1,300 square foot house raised her family. They raised four or five kids in 1,300 square foot house. They didn't have 6,000 fucking monsters foot monstrosities trying to be haters look down their nose when they can't afford the fuckers. No. Look, so you put the tariff on the good. China gonna flip out? Oh God, oh, China will fucking quit buying our fucking... Trust me, China needs us way more than we fucking need that. Fuck them, let them quit buying our debt. We don't fuck, we don't force them to buy... They have to buy our debt. They have to. They have no fucking choice. Because they're in a fucking system where it's trying to fucking grow and grow and grow. They have no confidence in their fucking currency. They have no confidence in their system. Neither does the rest of the fucking world. They're gaining it. They're gaining it. They will buy it irregardless. So you put the tariff on the good. Say you put 150% tariff on a good. Say you put 75 tariff and 75 duty. The money on the duty, do you think they're going to quit importing stuff? Oh no, they're going to still import stuff. It's going to force these CEOs and these crooked creeps to play fair. And it's not Chinese that are doing this. Most of it is Americans. Caterpillar, GM, you go on Apple, Walmart. There's your slave creators. They have just uprooted our jobs here and sent them up there. As Alexander Hamilton said, it is naive to think that we must not have a central bank, and we must not have tariffs. We have to be strong. We have to have a grade A credit rating. It is naive to think that our shores will not be attacked for our vast natural resources. He ended up being right. Was Jefferson's idealism, as you, Ron Pollers out there, 
Yeah, when you got a country of fucking 20 fucking million, yeah, it would be beautiful to live like that. But it's not reality in a country of 311 million and a country of fucking 7 billion when the workforce, you have a workforce of 3 billion people. The American workforce is 100, 150 billion. Do the math. Get it out. I made my students do it. Okay, 37 cents an hour is the average wage. Okay, we'll even give you a dollar an hour's average wage of the 3 billion. 2.7 billion. The, the, you know, the 300 million that exists in Europe and here, okay, drag the equilibrium together. Bring it together, weight it. What are you going to do? That's where we're headed. Buck 50 an hour. That's exact. It's really that simple. It is that simple. As these mass workforce, their wages might raise a teeny, teeny bit, but it's a weighted index. It's like the market is a weighted index. It's just like the Dow and the NASA and everything. You think, oh, the Dow is they fucking cheat and lie like a fucker to you. Go back and weigh 10 years what was in the NASDAQ, what was in the SP 500, what was in the fucking Dow. They start doing bad, they, with a, they take them out and they replace stuff in. In reality, the Dow would be way down there. And if you weigh it, it'd be two, three thousand. That's what a tariff does. It protects the workforce. If we had those tariffs and we had those duties, this country would turn around on a dime. We would start building up manufacturing. People would get workers' rights. We would fucking have teachers making more money, we would have money for roads, we would have money to pay off the debt, we would have money for everything, we wouldn't even have to raise taxes, we wouldn't even have to fucking go find a way, we wouldn't have to slash any programs, none, none, this country would be filthy, stinking rich on our own because we are the best workers in the fucking world, we are the most innovative people in the world in Western Europe here in Canada, because we are free, well we were, as we were free, we are not free anymore. A free worker who's making good money is a happy worker. That's why we had all those beautiful design GM fucking cars. It's no coincidence everybody drove a GM in Ford. You couldn't get them in. The only other fucking car we, as, the, as Mercedes, the famous business model said, we wanted to sell electric goods, so we just doubled the price. We avoided the tariffs and went way, way, way up. That was the only other car that people drove. That's what tariffs can do for us. And they could do it just like that. And it would be one stroke of the pen. And Bill Clinton, you can blame him. Seriously, and I'm a liberal. Bill Clinton signed our fucking dagger. He betrayed us so fucking hard. When he, uh, he talks about the contract on America with Gingrich, he signed our fucking death warrant. Kevin Blanche.